first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at your prestigious event. And thank you for Dr. Biswat for inviting me. It's a great honor to be joining you guys and to be able to present my limited experience with smile suction loss. And, um, and my title is No Reason to Panic. And really this talk is aimed at those of you who are starting out with smile surgery. Um, and my it really just shows my adventure with SMILE and um, my experiences so far. So we started SMILE um, in 2020. Uh, we're the first and only clinic in Melbourne offering SMILE surgery. So you can imagine there was a bit of resistance from our competitors and there's a lot of um, anti-SMILE propaganda out there, um, which has been interesting to manage. So why the anxiety regarding suction loss? Well, you know, getting new technology is always a little bit daunting. And there had been a fairly significant number of reports regarding suction loss with the Visumax. And this article by Rupal Shaw once again shows that SMILE obviously gives us great results uh, with a high degree of safety. However, when you're talking about complications, suction loss during the procedure comes up as the first complication. So it is certainly something that we're fairly um, conscious of and fairly um, anxious about. We all know that the Visimax has a gentle curved interface as opposed to a flat interface, which you get with the intralays and the wave lights, which I used in the past. And there's a lower suction and intraocular pressure rise with the Visimax, and the procedure itself takes slightly longer than LASIK, which all add to the higher risk or chance of getting a suction loss. So what does the literature show us? Well, there's a, obviously a, a, a number of articles out there and they vary with their incidence. So this huge study by Quinnett of 12,000 cases showed a very low incidence of suction loss. As the numbers get smaller, the incidence of suction loss increases, um, as you can see with these numbers. And the last one is an incidence of 6.38%, which is pretty uh, high. So what you can say is that as the numbers go up, certainly the um, frequency of suction loss decreases. So it obviously gets better as your technique improves and as you get more experience with SMILE. So how do we manage suction loss? Well, the best uh, uh, information you can get regarding this is by Dan Reinstein, and I attended his um, Forefront Refractive Surgery course in London in 2019 and studied his book extensively. And really, I've just translated some of my findings regarded, um, regarding SMILE suction loss. Uh, based on his teaching. So thank you, Dan. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, shout out to, to him and his um, compatriots regarding the information, which is really fantastic. So first of all, prevention is really key. And um, as uh, uh, Dan Reinstein has mentioned, prattle is very important. So surgery prattle with the patient during the procedure. We constantly talk throughout the laser procedure to make sure that the patient's um, aware and we count down the 30 seconds or 28 seconds it takes to do the, the smile procedure. Also, we make sure that the patient has very clear instructions prior to the surgery. And this needs to be translated if you change personnel. And we've had this experience where we had an increased incidence of suction loss when we changed some personnel within our ranks. And uh, that was pointed out to us by the um, uh, Zeiss technician, which is really quite useful. And also ocular surface fluid control. So I find that if there's too much fluid in the interface, then obviously there's a higher risk that the Visimax interface could slip off the cornea. And be prepared. So on our Visimax, we've stuck the um, cheat sheet with uh, the suction loss management, uh, just in case we get into that situation. Uh, we always look at this prior to starting surgery, just to remind ourselves what we need to do if in the case we do get any suction loss. So it's really useful to have that freely available and that's stuck onto the top of the Visimax. So um, this is a re restart treatment wizard and it's very intuitive and very clever, but I'll just go through some of these um, individual steps. And really it's important to know what the steps in SMILE are and when suction loss occurs for the individual situations. So our experience so far is uh, we've done 500 eyes so far. So it's still early in our, um, we're still sort of early in our smile experience, I guess. Um, however, you know, we are getting more confident with the procedure. And um, in our time, we've had three suction loss 
So it's less than one um, percent, which is, you know, we that's I guess is acceptable after um, this number, and we certainly don't want to increase that. So we'll, you know, uh, take the preventative measures where we can. So we've had one suction loss within the lenticule cut over 10% of the lenticle cut, one during the cap cut and one during the cap side cut, which I'll show you in a moment. So the first thing to say is that the Visimax really is awesome. And, you know, this is a patient who has very obvious nystagmus and had smile procedure, which was really pretty good. You can see how the um, Visimax, the eye is very solid during the actual laser procedure. And you can see the obvious nystagmus there. And it was even worse on the second eye. Um, but once the suction's on, the eye was really rock solid and there's no sign of any suction loss. So you can see once again that the Visimax, even though it has those lower parameters than something like the intralase, it is an obviously very robust suction. So this is um, the suction loss that occurred during um, cap cut. And this is the first one that happened. And you can see the cap is sort of a third of the way through. And we just followed the wizard, which says you redock and you restart. So we managed to restart and successfully remove the lenticle without any issues. Um, it is obviously quite tricky to, for the patient to fixate as they can't see through the OBL or the laser cut. Um, however, there are grooves where the laser has uh, applinated and, the, and the, the cap kind of just slotted straight in there. And so that we didn't have any issue with redocking this patient. Uh, the, the, this is the, uh, the wizard, which basically tells you what to do. So you really don't have to think too hard about it and just redock and carry on. And you don't have to change anything on the settings. <clears throat> This is the second uh, suction loss we had. It was during the lenticle cut in the second half of the lenticle cut. So uh, this to me was, uh, there was too much uh, water or fluid in the interface, as you can see it's sort of getting in there. I don't think really think the patient moved their eye, but it seemed to me like there's too much water in the interface. What did the wizard tell us? It told us redock and do LASIK. And it's quite intimidating doing LASIK over that um, lenticle cut because even though we know that it's very deep within the stroma, it uh, does freak you out that you think um, you're going to get a uh, mixture of layers. So, um, and also with the, once the LASIK's done, it, you can see that uh, the OBL is in the, that old ventricle cut. So this patient did very well. Um, there was 6.5 in each eye. We did smile on the second eye and uh, we converted the site to LASIK after. This was the first eye we did and smile on the second eye and both did very well. And once again, this is the, the treatment wizard. It says do a um, thin flap LASIK over that. Uh, we generally do a 100 micron flap with the Visumax. And so we just reduce the size of the flap. So you know, our standard cap size is 135 microns. And you know that the lenticle is you know, quite far away from that. So there's plenty of space in order to create a, a LASIK flap. And so that was pretty easy and successful. Our least successful <laughs> um, one, where it's always good to show the, the bad outcomes, is the cap side cut. So this was, um, uh, uh, just did not go well. This is a young chap. Um, he had very poor English. And um, you can see what happened there. So it was just all very bad. And I tried to, this was during the cap side cut. There was no cut there, so I was unable to enter. And I just aborted the procedure and came back two weeks later and performed LASIK, which is not ideal if somebody's expecting to get smile. So where did I go wrong there? So this is the, um, this is the wizard. So in this case, the wizard didn't actually detect that there was a suction break during the cap cut. It, I assume that as it broke off and got the OBL, it, uh, it did actually make a cut, but not all the way through. So um, the wizard basically tells you to reduce the cap diameter and um, increase the depth of the cap size, that you can reduce the diameter a little bit and increase the depth, therefore ensuring that you are actually in the, um, the pocket. Um, so where did we go wrong? So I think we didn't take enough time with this patient um, regarding his instructions. We could have spent a bit more time explaining the, the instructions to him. And really what I should have done was, um, as soon as I, there was a sign that it was a, 
uh, not going well, I really should have just stopped this action. So Dan Reinstein's teaching is pause, regain control, and continue. If I had just stopped um, at early on, then I think it would have been a better outcome. So I'll just replay that video for you. So really what I should have done was um, stop around about now and um, regain control, but I was too late. So yeah, no good. I'll take that one on the chin. And um, hopefully next time we have a capsite cut, which there will be, I'll do um, uh, do a better job. Um, so what about if uh, the, we haven't experienced the lentical cut in the first um, event, the lentical cut, very simple, you just read on and um, carry on uh, according to the wizard. And the lentical side cut um, automatically reduces the diameter of the um, lenticule and increases the depth to ensure that you make a good lenticle um, side cut. Uh, we haven't experienced uh, suction loss through that either. So in conclusion, um, the, the rumor of increased suction loss of Vizumax is really not true. Um, uh, you just need to be prepared and need to have um, your wizard instructions ready. Prevention is better than cure by far, so if you take those steps and are meticulous with the steps to prevent suction loss, I think then uh, the incidence of You'll be like me in that third and panic, which is kind of exactly what I did. All right. Suction loss does not equal vision loss. It's, 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 very it's, a, it's a fantastic machine and fantastic software. So thank you very much. I hope that allows some of your fears regarding suction loss with the Vizumax and during small procedure. So thank you once again for inviting me to this forum. Greatly appreciated, and hopefully, uh, we'll get to meet face to face in the not too distant future.